Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic today is process validation with specific focus on statistics. Aaron Snyder here from Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. Make sure you subscribe to get all the good content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for our agenda. Stick around to the end to get the bonus questions. Our topic, process validation statistics, comes directly from 13485 section 7.5.6 and 82075. There is also a specific area within both 1345 and 824 statistical techniques, and that is section 8.1 analysis of data and 820.250 statistical techniques. We have a separate video for statistical techniques. In this one, we will focus more on how they influence process validation. Process validation statistics in five words. Base sampling on valid statistics. The use of statistics is an integral part to any process validation. We utilize statistics for in-process controls and checks, final release inspection, so the sampling that we do on final product, the number the length and duration of our OQ runs, the number of PQ runs, the extent of software testing, that is software testing in IQ, software testing in LQ, software testing in PQ, the analysis that we do on the final inspection data, and then any process capability analysis that we do. We have already discussed the number of PQ runs in previous videos. In this video, we will focus more on the statistical analysis that we do on our data sets. For our sample sizes to have statistical power, we have to test the resulting data sets for normality. If our data is normal, then we can do the standard statistical inferences. We can look at means, standard deviation, we can do ANOVA, capability analysis. There's a lot of different statistical inferences that we can use when we have normal data. Sometimes our data sets are non-normal. The non-normality may be caused by outliers. And a lot of times what I find is people wanna just throw out the outliers without understanding why they are there. Whenever we have a statistical outlier, we have to analyze and investigate that, an that outlier to understand what caused it. If we can assign a cause to that outlier, it may be removed from the data set. Most statisticians, though, will tell you not to remove the outliers to leave them in the data sets. Now, let's say we test our data set and it comes out to be non-normal. It's bimodal, it's exponential, it's some other distribution. Well, at this point, we have a decision to make. We can do one of two things. We can transform that data into normal data. It's called a data transformation. Or we can do a best fit analysis. If we do the data transformation, well now we've transformed our data into a normal data set, we can do those normal statistical inferences at that point. But if we do a best fit analysis, now we have to follow a new statistical model, whether it's exponential, U charts, P charts, whatever they are, we've identified what that new statistical underlying method is, we're gonna to have to utilize that. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, all of my sample sizes are supported by a statistical rationale. Second, all of my data sets are analyzed for normality. I test them to see if the data is normal. Third, if the data is non-normal, I investigate and figure out why the data is non-normal. Fourth, I address non-normality appropriately, either through a best fit analysis or a data transformation. And then finally, I handle and investigate outliers appropriately. So how do I know it's not working? Well, I do have sample sizes that have no supporting statistical rationale. Second, I get data sets and I don't analyze them for normality. Third, I use standard normal data inferences on non-normal data sets. And then finally, I routinely throw out outliers without addressing or investigating the cause of those outliers. And now for those three bonus questions. How do we test for normality when we have data sets? Second, does our procedure require us to test for normality whenever we have a data set? And then third, how do we handle statistical outliers? Do they require an investigation? 
Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained. Making quality systems simple for you.